Hello everyone. Um, happy Monday. Happy Pride Month. Happy Immigrant Heritage Month. Um, super, super, super excited about starting this conversation with um, my sister, comrade, Grisa Martinez Rosas. Um, we'll be getting started shortly, um, but appreciate folks taking some time to, to join us for this converse, for this conscious conversation. Um, I see Karan. Okay. Hey, Karan. Thank you so much for joining. Um, Steven too. Hello, Steven. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Reminder that we are in Pride and Immigrant Heritage Month. Um, and that's part of why we wanted to invite Grace to join us. Um, is to be able to talk a little bit about the intersections of being LGBTQ um, and also an immigrant um, and just reflect on the current moment that we are also in now too. Um, there's a lot happening in the world with the pandemic, a lot happening in the world with uprisings um, to demand um, justice and to be in defense of black lives. Um, so, um, Looking, truly looking forward to, to this conversation. Um, we also want it to be engaging too. So if there are questions or folks want to add additional things to the conversation, we definitely would, would welcome that as well. Um, let's see here. Um, all right. Adding Grace now. Hey. What's up? How you doing, Grace? <laughs> so good to see you. <laughs> likewise, likewise, likewise. Um, thank you so much for taking some time. I know there's a lot going on. Uh, yeah, I mean, any opportunity to hang out with you, uh, to talk movement and pride and immigrant stuff, always, always. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, um, I was, before you came on, I was just doing a little bit of an introduction about the conversation, um, you know, telling folks that we're talking a little bit about the intersections of pride and Immigrant Heritage Month and just reflections on the current moment. Um, I know I had some, we have some questions that we want to ask, but we want to make this more of a conversation um, for folks who are going to tune in now and we'll also be posting this on IGTV so folks can check it out later on as well. Cool. Um, awesome, y'all. So I, I was sharing a little bit about Grace before we got started, but um, in addition to being a friend and a comrade and a, what I like to call a movement mate, um, Grace serves currently as the Deputy Executive Director of United We Dream. Um, originally from Hidalgo, Mexico, uh, Grace immigrated to the U.S. with her family at an early age um, and grew up in Dallas, Texas as an undocumented immigrant. Um, Grace has organized youth and workers for the passage of pro-immigrant policies at all levels, local and national, um, for the past 10 years. So Grace has been in this work for some time. Um, she may, it may not look like it because she still looks so youthful and young, but Grace has definitely been in this work for a little bit. Um, she co-founded the Council for Minority Student Affairs at Texas A&M University, the first undocumented youth-led group in the university's 100-year history, and also helped uh, found the Texas Dream Alliance and was a fellow um, with the League of Young Voters. So some, some, um, some, some, context and some more information about you, Grisa, that I wanted to share with folks who will, will be tuning in. Um, and I guess kind of along that, I guess, can, can, are you okay if we kind of start diving into some questions? Yeah, um, so the first question is like, so who are your people, Grisa? Um, well, first of all, I just want to say uh, thank you for the introduction. I haven't thought about my time at A&M in a long time, so mm. I'll hear that again. Um, my people are uh, plant people, even those that have like a succulent or two, like a dead succulent or two in their past, like me. <laughs> I just feel like there's something 
about like taking responsibility for like bringing about life and like beauty into the work. It's kind of like organizers, like taking responsibility for enabling other people to do this. And so mm -hmm. my people are like, um, I don't know, I was thinking about like Selena loving, like Cardi B quoting uh, <laughs> dancers and, and like women that like really love, um, I don't know, just to have fun. And like, mm. um, you know, and then this weekend, I was actually telling my friend earlier that like I didn't, on like Saturday, I think it was, I didn't go to sleep until like six in the morning because that mm. was. Uh, going down this like ancestry.com like rabbit hole and I was able to go back and learn like my great great grandparents name and so mm. there was something about like like people that have deep roots and like have made it uh, like hard times those are my people um mm. so yeah you're my people Greg. I just get honored to be on the path with you I like All it right. who's my mate I like it. I might do that. <laughs> yeah, moving in it, moving in it. Because I feel like, you know, I feel like for me, you know, I know um, when I just, as I think about movement, I think about organizing, like people are like, I, I know that people are starting to use this term like relational organizing. And I'm like, but organizing is like all about relationships. So, so if it's not, so if it's not relational and you're like, and, and you're not building with folks in that way, then I'm like, I, I question like, what, is that really organizing? Like, what you, what you like, um, exactly. So I, I, I'm always intrigued by this, like people like trying to come up with some of these new terms. Cause I'm like, well, actually let's, sometimes it's just keep, it's, it's better just to keep it simple. Like when I say organizing, it actually is about how are we building trust? How are you like getting mm -hmm. to know each other at a deeper level, deeper level? And how do we like relate and, um, and align in that way? So that's, I definitely appreciate you sharing, saying that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I that resonates with me and like I feel like I've uh the older that I'm getting <laughs> the more that I'm realizing that there's like these um and mm -hmm. sometimes I want to put like new terms or new names and I think that one of the cycles is just like movement showing up like strongly in like, young people and queer people and people of color like sort of leading the way and the mm -hmm happens over and over again so even right now like when we're seeing like uprisings like it's been like centuries of work in the making and you know it's like yeah people can call it what they want as long as you recognize like where the power comes from which is the people yeah absolutely and and i and i also say too it's like there's also a certain thing around like the the ability to be yourself to like to have fun to like to, to 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 be joyful and to like be to know that when you are in particular spaces there's like you you have no particular like um inhibitions and like you're willing to engage in particular ways and mm -hmm. that's something that i've been also holding really close to is like as i think about you know the spaces that i want to be and i want to i want to be in spaces where i feel affirmed where i can be my full self where i can laugh and not be, not have to like look over my shoulder or like wonder what somebody is going to be thinking or something and so for me it's like how do i create conditions where more people can do that for themselves mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um and i think that's part of part of organizing is to like create space for folks whether it's in a one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting where they they feel like they can do that and it just makes it like our movement irresistible like i think that a movement that creates conditions for Greg to dance and bust out his moves in the middle of a meeting is a good movement that people would want to join. You know, it's like, it's even, there's like the joy of it, like being able to like, you know, be with comrades, being able to like be silly, like uh, hold like tense conversations about our lives and also like turn up together. Like that just feels like how we're going to win. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I totally feel you. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I guess spe and I was, and speaking a little bit more uh, on this a little bit on this idea of just being our full selves, like I want I kind of part of, you know, why I was excited about having a conversation with you is like June, as we talked about, is like, of course, Pride Month and also Immigrant Heritage Month. And I think even within this particular June, there's been a lot of things that have happened. And so, so maybe just start off more broadly, like 
how do you, when you think about Pride or think about Immigrant Heritage Month, like how do you celebrate? Or what is, what is your idea of what it means to celebrate during, these, during this month in particular? Well, this year celebrating like Pride and like Immigrant Heritage Month was like a whole thing in and of itself. Like I think, mm -hmm. like, you know, being a queer woman, being an undocumented woman, I think at this time there was a little bit of like, man, like I wish I could be out at the streets, like partying, mm -hmm. a little bit of like, oh wow, like there's this, all of this energy on the ground and to be able to see that like, the movement for Black Lives is led by so many like queer, black, powerful women and people. I think it's been like, uh, mm. I don't know, really inspiring. So it actually feels this year, like instead of the of the um, parades and stuff like that, we had like an uprising. And so I'm down to have this kind of kind every year <laughs> and every this kind of immigrant heritage month every year. Like I just felt like it was it was perfect it was like grounded in like the true meaning of what it was like how mm -hmm. you started with like a right and trans women women color sort of leading the way um so i think for me it just feels like being able to say all of those things out loud like that you want to party that you feel heavy um because of everything that's happening and also just i think like surviving i think that mm -hmm. um in this moment where like it everything feels like shit i don't know if i'm gonna be able to pay my rent or like put food on the table um being able to wake up each day i think feels for me like an act of i don't know of liberation of being able to say like no matter mm -hmm. what you know so that's how I've been thinking about celebration. I am waiting though for this pandemic to like subside so that we can party on both ends. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely, it, there is a different experience, you know, uh, not being able to be able to do some of the, the in-person celebration. So I definitely would say that. And I know that we're trying to be better about figuring out ways to still share space virtually, but you know, there's, it's, 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 there's, there are some differences to the, to the experience. Um, and, you know, I think it's a, you, you kind of mentioned this, but I think it's just good to bring in some of our ancestors, Silver, um, I think Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson, because, you know, today is actually the 51st anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising, um, yep. which is the reason why we celebrate Pride today. And it's, a, it's an interesting, like, comparison point when we're like, look, 51 years ago, um, black and other trans women of color actually rose up against police violence and that 51 years later it is it's, it's still an issue that we need to address and it is also black femmes and queer folks who are on the front lines and leading now saying enough is enough and pushing back on that too so it's it's important to reflect and also connect connect that even 51 years later it's still policing and police is still a system that we are still trying to to, to fight yeah, and then also all of the, like, pathways, like, forward or all of the work that we've done to get to even a better place to be able to find that. I was, I was thinking about how um, Maurice Mitchell, who, like, leads the like, Working Families Party and, like, I'm from mm -hmm. he joined um, our DACA celebration call that we had. Um, and he was sharing his own immigrant experience and how his parents are immigrants to the country and also how, like... Um, you know, like uh, calling us to confront our, like within immigrant communities are like anti-blackness and like um, mm. all of this internalized stuff and like being able to say that, you know, in, all across the board, like, we, we got to show up for one another. And it's not just like, I show up for you because like, you know, I'm, I'm here to have your back. But it's like, I, when I show up for you, I show up for myself, which I think mm. is like, so... I don't know, light years from where even I sometimes started in the movement where like people didn't really want to talk about race within the immigrant justice conversation. Mm -hmm. And now being able to see us like unapologetically sort of barreling down and saying like, no, immigrant justice and racial justice um, are interconnected, not only by the systems that oppress us, but by the fighters and the visionaries that are like, making way for it to be better. So yeah, I think that that's things there's like, again, the cycles, you know, like how things um, connect. And I'm excited about 
like what I'm doing to like make it easier uh, for people mm -hmm. that are coming behind us. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and speaking of making it easier and kind of leading, leading, leading the charge, June was also a special month too because there was a case in the Supreme Court where there was a decision made right on DACA. Can, for for folks who are maybe, who may be newer um, um, and maybe not be familiar, can you give a quick overview of DACA and what what decision that they, they, they made and what some of the implications are of that? Yeah, totally. So DACA is Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. It's this policy that would allow undocumented young people, uh, some of us, to be able to have protection from deportation, from ICE and CBP, and a work permit. Um, so those are like the policy things. What it actually is, though, is like a movement like victory, like the mm -hmm. affirmation that young queer um af people like women of colors like leading strategy and saying mm -hmm. like you know whatever to the status quo like is w like wins um time and time again and so you know um i remember the the daca campaign in the beginning to be honest with you like i grew up in in texas and you know like as I'm, it was a conservative background. My the scope of my imagination it wasn't as broad as it is today, and mm. because I was like, it was system systemically like in that point, like I just wasn't allowed to dream as much as I wanted to. And so whenever I came to a United We Dream space, and someone said like, "Oh, we're gonna do this thing. We're gonna demand that they stop deportations." At the beginning, I was like, nah, that's not going to happen. I'm just going to focus on, like, doing my own thing in my state, in my, in my university. And then um, there was an organizer. Her name is Mirna. And she came over to Texas, and she's like, where are y'all? Like, we need full, we need to be able to, like, push, push, and push. And so I remember joining, and I was, like, you know, a little bit like, oh, okay, I can do this. And as we were seeing like the office takeovers of the Obama campaign of like calling him, like telling Obama that he had the power to be able to, to give protection from deportation, even though he would say that he didn't um, like that was, I don't know. It was revolutionary for me that like people could demand exactly what they wanted uh, without reservations, like, even if people all around us were telling us that it was the wrong thing to do. Um, and then to be able to like see him actually like announce it in the Rose Garden, uh, even though he didn't want to do it at first and we had to push him to do it, it just felt to me like, mm. oh, it's an affirmation that like young, black, brown, women, queer people can like, are at the center of anything that changes and for our lives to be better. So. That's what DACA is, is like that affirmation. And we just won it again or protected it at the Supreme Court. Um, and it's been sort of the honor of my life to have been able to lead the strategy um, mm. to, to get there. That is amazing. I think, and I think what I'm also hearing you say too, Grace, is like, it's also a, it also shows the power that's been built. Like mm. it, to, to be centered and be led by impacted folks, you know, women of color, queer folks, that there's also this uh, moment where, we're, where people, elected officials, are reckoning with people that they're supposed to represent. And that mm. even, if, even if you, like, and that what I heard you say was like, Obama didn't necessarily, like, this wasn't something he was going to do without being pushed. But because of the organizing, because of the actions that were done, because, put, like, like the, the power that was built and the power that was asserted and leveraged, Yep. Like there was there was an there was a ability to shift this decision this particular decision maker into the decision that folks wanted like them to him to make and so I just wanted just to name that too and to like step into that and for us to like recognize that like this like it takes the organizing and it takes intentionality to actually make some of these decisions especially when the people in power maybe don't automatically share the particular values right. Totally. And I guess, you know, as someone that like, I live in Washington, DC, a lot of my work is like working within systems to try to minimize harm, and then also pushing sort of like the window of what's possible. Um, 
well, sometimes it feels lonely or it feels like, oh, man, I don't know if I could do that. Like, that's cool, but like, I ain't gonna do that. And, or I don't even know how to, where to start. And I think about like, how like Sylvia taught us how to do that when she mm-hmm. like held this, this uprising, how like Ella Baker like taught us how to do that. It's not, it's not even just like the wishy-washy movement stuff, but like, it's re- for real. Like there's like mm-hmm. blueprints when you say that like, women like women of color queer people like it's not just a value thing like a thing that you want to do because like the right thing to do it's like it is strategic to ensure that like young people are leading because it actually it actually like turns out um like delivers real change for people's lives yeah yeah um so i guess to kind of build on that piece because i i know that like you kind of said it like, you know, while this was a victory, there's still lots of other documented folks who aren't necessarily covered by DACA right. and that you're, that there's even a pivot now to think about, okay, so now that there's been an ability to at least get this huge victory at the Supreme Court level, can you share maybe some insider thoughts on how are you trying to use this momentum to kind of build towards, you know, more, a permanent solution or a more expansive policy and, um, some initial thinking around in, around that? Yeah, well, I guess first here, I want to start off with something that I actually learned a lot from you, Greg, which is like the myth of the model minority, um, mm-hmm. which is like sometimes where this dreamer narrative sort of comes through, which is like, oh, this immigrant that it's like the cap and the gown and it's like just like who, like here white people, don't be so threatened by them. Like they're just like you. They love, I don't know, whatever love people white people love but it's it we have been able to like learn from that and be able to harness like the popularity of young people of color to tell a broader story about our community so if you support an undocumented young person then you better support the mother the father the loved ones that have invested and given everything that they had so they could have hands you better also support like the defunding of the agency that is trying to hunt them and and is hunting them in their communities Mm -hmm. and you also need to know that like these people are not people to be pitied or to be like given charity to but they are powerful and they're transforming culture and politics and storytelling everywhere they go um and so that i think all of that is um, from the point of united we dream a way in which we can make way for broader reforms for our people. Mm. And you know, one of the things that I've, um, I've thought about a lot, um, like in this path is sort of like, when I first started, all I wanted was like papers so that I could go to med school um, and buy my mom a home and have um, a good job and maybe marry somebody. That, that was like the extent, as I was telling you, of my imagination. And in this moment, there's a question question about like, what does citizenship do for us when mm-hmm. Brianna Taylor was a citizen sleeping in her home and she died when it when it was um, like what does it like citizenship is not enough. Mm-hmm. It is about like dignity and it's about like a humanity being affirmed by every system around us. Um, and so it's not even just about like the 11 million undocumented people. It's about like every person who has ever felt, um, you know, disrespected, misrepresented and, um, like, I can't think of the English word, but like rechazada, like rejected from like the status quo, like that's the people that we're fighting for. And when we think about our fight, at United We Dream, we think about how do we, how is it everything that we do creating the conditions for something better, not just for us, not just for immigrants, but for all of us. Mm. No, I appreciate you kind of like walking, walk, walking with folks through that because it was also for me, um, United We Dream, that really made, like, forced me to even reckon and t- talking about like, well, what about, you know, like, the, the 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 high academic achieving folks and to not actually make it about like people should be like 
humans and we should honor and give them respect and dignity because they're a human and not because of a, like their grades or what kind of work that they do. Um, and so it was earlier on in my student organizing career where it was like, okay, I appreciate that frame because then we are, it, it, it allows, it allows us to be better about when we say justice and liberation or freedom for all, we do mean for all folks and it's not um, conditional, right? And, and mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not defined by some of these systems that weren't even meant for us to succeed in in the first place. And so how are we actually flipping that on its head a little bit to say, well, like it's for, this is for about everyone and for everyone and we are tied together. So I, I think that that's a really important and I think in the spirit of Pride, in the spirit of American Heritage Month, like a really important tie-in to how I think folks are trying to operate, particularly in this moment, but like as a, as a value uh, and, as, and, and, and how to ground, ground yeah. the work that we're doing, right? Well, and then doesn't that just make it even more like joyful to do this work? Like mm. able to say, like when I show up to this meeting or like this one-on-one, -on -one, like I'm not only doing that for like, you know myself or like particular group but like it's like i don't know for me it just feels like it's easier i don't know how it feels like for you but like to be able to show up for yourself for your loved ones it just makes it more joyful yeah yeah and i think and i think it's and, and I'm, I'm glad that we keep going back to this because i think it's such an important thing that gets lost sometimes i think people do get sometimes get lost in like the the, the goal or like the campaign outcomes that we're trying to move that it's like no, sometimes we have to remind ourselves that in order for us to really center our people and center our experiences, part of it is actually like not necessarily like putting that aside for a moment and actually saying, okay, you know what? Like, let's do some dancing. Let's let's <laughs> let's let's break some bread. Let's cook and eat eat this meal together. Um, and that's actually just as important as any of the other contacting your, you know, elected official. I, um, you know, any of the other tactics you would do in a particular campaign. It's like, how are we actually uh, allowing folks to, to, to experience some of that joy and some of that happiness that's separate from us trying to move them to, to action? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's not a, it's, it's also that like, it's not just that it's one of many things. It's like that everything flows from there, you know, like mm -hmm. everything flows from trust. Everything flows from like, the ability to like have uh, to be like to not feel like you have to take yourself too seriously or have the most sharp analysis in the room like the ability to look silly or ask a question in a meeting because like the night before you were like you know like hanging out and like you kind of fell on the dance floor like that stuff like sharpens strategy and it sharpens mm -hmm. like even like the energy to keep going because Right now, particularly, I will say that in the the first months of the of the pandemic, it was just really hard. Honestly, it was really hard to do this work and to know that like I was showing up at work for people that like I really love, that like I've like as you were saying like broken bread with. That mm -hmm. when we could travel, we would go to like different parts of the country together, um, go to a karaoke bar, like all of that sort of like adds up to sharp strategy, like committed people and like longevity in the work. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I, um, yeah, I think that that's, I, I appreciate you kind of with the reframe, like around how it's like all connected, how we're trying to build these relationships and spaces so that it, it'll only sharpen and make us stronger in all of our aspects of our lives and all of our work and in our organizing. Yeah. Um, so I definitely appreciate that reframe. You know, one thing that I, um, I, I at least attribute, attribute to you saying a lot is this phrase, uh, joyful rebellion. And, I, <laughs> and it really like every time I see you write, write it or say it, it really like resonates with me. I wanted to know if you could just share a little bit with folks. So like, when you, what does that mean to you? And like and, and 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 I guess especially in this moment, why do you feel um, like joyful rebellion is something that we should be um, striving for? Yeah, I I mean I will say that joyful rebellion. I know I first heard it from like my team at UWD, um, and I think that it's kind of like it's like for so long we have been like 
put like been lied to when we think about like this american dream like the more that i work the more that i like overextend myself the least amount of space that i take the more likely i am to have like all of these things and you know that means that you put like partying aside and your family aside yourself aside mm. and when when that happens it ends up being things like your imagination is not able to expand like in the way that you needed to to show up in this moment and i think that joyful rebellion is really about reclaiming yourself back it's about mm -hmm. saying like i want to be a healed healer i don't want to be a wounded healer that's going around the the country like trying to help other people and like overextending myself while i also have this like wound over here that i haven't taken care of because i don't have time but we what i when i think about joyful rebellion and people doing that work it's like people loving themselves, prioritizing themselves, um, and serving as a mirror for our communities and like being able to show back to people that we are powerful, that just as they are, like we are not broken. We have like food, we have music, we have dancing and all of that, I think is sort of like an embodiment of the, of the future that we want to build for ourselves so you know real talk i struggle with that a, a lot of the time like i need to remind myself like oh i shouldn't be like i need to like drink water i need to make sure that we're like i'm showing up for myself um but part of the process is just like noticing it without judging yourself for it and um and then you know tuning into I don't know, the latest video rant from Cardi B and just like laughing at, you know, whatever it is that you brings you joy. Like that's that's one step towards like getting to a closer place where everybody feels that kind of energy. And yeah. making our movement irresistible, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's something that I will I think it's interesting you say that because even the one thing that I've realized in the pandemic is that I'm, while I love dancing, I always try to keep it separate from my, my work or like my organizing spaces. And I was like, you know, and one thing that I realized was like, you know what, this is also part of who I am. And if, mm -hmm. if I want people to love me and love all of Greg and all components of Greg, you know what, that also means that they have to, they, they should, and I invite yeah. them to also love the, the, the Greg that dances. And so I've tried to be more intentional about you know, allowing myself to be free in that way to share dance or share that I love dance in more spaces because yeah. it is something that I am conscious that one, it like, it, 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 dancing is, makes me feel free in a particular way where I'm able to, like, I can take my mind off of anything, everything else that I have going on when I'm dancing. Um, and then I'm finding as I'm like, I actually started a TikTok because of oh, the what? pandemic. Oh my God. Uh, um, and I've been posting videos. <laughs> um, but like, I've been posting some videos on there and people are like, yo, you look so happy and you're also helping bring joy to us. And so yeah. I, never, I never really thought about it that way, you know? And so for me, I was like, wow, not only is this healing for myself and healing for like my body and the, like my spirit, mm -hmm. um, but it also is providing a space and avenue for other folks too. And so like I, um, so yeah, so that was something that I've been trying to like really hold and like um, do more of because I know that that's something that I know I personally would appreciate and it would be healing for me, but I I'm finding other folks are appreciating it too. Yeah, no, I feel you. I mean, I'm really grateful for it. It just. I don't know, there's something about like, it gives me permission when I see you do that to like be like my own version of my full authentic self in the spaces that I'm in. Um, I think also about like uh, my good friend, uh, Charlene, she was tweeting last time about how like when they were having the Juneteenth mobilizations here in DC, she's like, if you saw a truck full of uh, black people uh, singing and like saying that like Black Lives Matter, that was us. And like for me, it was just like, what better recruitment? What better like 
tactic than to be like at the back of a truck singing karaoke songs and like living out what we want to see you know it just feels like um the country and i'm ready for a different type of movement that is um really grounded in like joy and also in the sorrow that comes with like being like a queer um undocumented um black and brown people in this country is like it's undeniable the mm -hmm. amount of stress and the amount of um anxiety um that just existing sometimes brings to us and so what better way of defiance than to like dance and sing and eat and like laugh and do mm -hmm. all of these pieces and i think that also creates space for the discipline of like campaigning of organizing of political power but all of the stuff but it all flows from that place yeah yeah is there has is there any as, as we've seen these uprisings across the country and globe and as we're you know seeing um different folks talk about defunding the police or demanding demanding the reinvestment in black and other people of color communities yeah. like I guess I'm, I'm curious from your vantage point, like, and especially in this month, right, a Pride of Immigrant Heritage Month, is there anything that, um, that you've learned or anything that's, that's been like an aha moment for you where you've been like, okay, you know what, this is something that, I, that we should do differently or something that you want to do additionally or anything along those lines that you want to reflect or share with folks? There's been tons, so I probably should share a couple. Um, one is that... Um, it it was this moment's a reminder of how like slow seemingly insignificant um like one to ones and relationships create or lay the seeds for like big massive change so you know i think about um there was uh, i was part of this uh, cohort of people called the freedom side just, like young uh like black and brown uh, people that were like trying to get together and like figure out how to be in like solidarity and struggle together and how um you know we were also just hanging out and now a lot of these things like or these opportunities uh, or this moment allows us for us to like just be able to pick up the phone and say like hey what are y'all doing about this um so it just feels like it's an affirmation about that it's also, um, I think for me, it was as soon as I started seeing like big things like uh, big corporations seeing that saying that they were going to forgive rents for a couple months, or I was just talking to Karina Ruiz from Arizona and ADAC, and she was telling me how um, there was a moment where like the um, public transportation was free for people and like the, they said it was okay or people got government checks so they could pay their rent and their food like it just things that we thought were not possible are possible and the only thing in the middle between you and that is political will mm -hmm. um, and culture shift um, and so I do think that in this moment it was like a, a huge pandemic that is definitely we are still like dealing with but i think that the movement that we're building and the interventions that we're driving are even stronger than that and so imagine what we can do or make happen if we just like remember that like it's just about political will and culture and like really like not allowing for our imagination to be suppressed about what is possible um so those are two things that like um make me really excited and i also don't want to forget because i think mm -hmm. this moment will pass just like every moment um but i i just yeah i want to be able to hold on to this and finally i'll just say that um taking responsibility for undoing our own anti-black oh sorry okay. uh, <laughs> You I said think, responsibility in doing our own anti-blackness is the last Yeah, thing. so taking responsibility for undoing that, I think, is, like, part of what I also don't want to forget. Like, I, I see you leading all of these conversations with AAPI folks talking about that. Like, 
we're trying to do that within United We Dream to be able to undo it. But we know that that is like centuries of work that has been uh, done to teach us some of these things. And it will take intentional work to undo it. So let's like not let's not forget about that as we move through this moment. Definitely. No, I think that I think that's right. And I think that there's also just a lot more willingness and openness for people to engage in these types of conversations. You know, even even in my own family, like some folks mm -hmm. were saying, like, this is that somebody told me, um, my cousin was like, this is the, f the first time I went to a protest or an action like what? this. Um, like people calling me saying, hey, I want to engage in this conversation with another family member. And so I think that there's I think we have a responsibility or at least we, we, we have a space and a time now where we could probably engage folks who maybe wouldn't be engaged otherwise. And so for me, it's like, how do we um, support folks, provide them the, the resources to be able to kind of spread these conversations and spread this knowledge um, to more and more people? Um, yep. Um, so one question, I, so another, so I, I, just a couple more questions, because I know we are getting close to time. But so like one question I have for you is, um, as I think about, we talked a little bit about the history of pride and folks like Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, but I also imagine that along, uh, 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 along your own path um, to, where, to where you've gotten, there may have been different people who have inspired you or who have um, lifted you up. Um, or supported you. Is there anyone that in particular that you wanna that you wanna name now and just bring into the space as someone that you admire that that's that's giving you lots of love? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's too many to name. Um, I will say though that um, for me, you know, being undocumented has always been something that's part of me. Like my family, you know, talked about it, and it's been like a big part of my identity. Um, the piece about like embracing my queerness hasn't been the same. Like I've mm -hmm. grown up in like um, really conservative home and a really conservative state and an immigrant family who wanted to do everything to make sure that you didn't stand out and like we're like not challenging the status quo because of safety. And I guess in my journey to liberate myself and like own this part of myself it's like like those people those queer people that like have like no matter what embraced those pieces of themselves and like done and like allowed or created space for people to like go through their own journey i think about like the the queer people at united we dream spaces when we first started that like um drove this intervention in one of our national mm -hmm. congresses to say like we are queer too it's not just undocumented and since then like it's, it's like a cemented part of united we dream that we are like undocumented unafraid queer trans unashamed um so i want to bring those people in who like who like through the the audacity of like just being exactly who they are have shaped my own life have allowed me to like be honest with myself and like really live it out loud um you know one of those people are you greg like i feel like having early on conversations um about like my own queerness and what that meant and having a safe space to do that you know there are people like you that i hope everybody um every queer baby out there has um and along their pathway so that's who i want to bring in today oh you're so kind i um I, I think especially as it relates to that, I think, you know, I, I think one thing that I'm, why I feel so committed or willing to share space or at least provide the ability for folks to share is like, I was outed a lot in college and also like my coming out experience is probably a little challenging, especially in terms of like the dynamics with family and just like what that meant. And so as I really come into myself and come into my own identity, it's been more, it's been a priority and important for me to also like build and connect with folks who are questioning or who are trying to, to, to really mm -hmm. own all aspects of their identity. Um, Cause I, I've been there before. And, and for me, it's like, everyone's like, okay, you could like, you come out and it's like done. It's like, no, this is an ongoing process, yeah. right? Like, and I sometimes I'm like, okay, well, just in case you didn't know, they're here. 
hey, <laughs> like just in case you forgot. Um, totally. So, um, so I, I, I'm reminded that it's important to affirm that and aff not affirm it just for myself, but you never know who else is around listening or seeing and, and is also feels the affirmation of like, okay, I can be me. I should be me. I will be me. And, and as you said, like unafraid and unashamed, which I think is such a, um, such a strong and I think an, an, um, important thing to kind of hold, you know? Mm, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm a proponent of that. I'm grateful that like whatever got you in this path um, put you in mine. And, you know, my goal is to now be that um, for other people and to ensure mm -hmm. that United We Dream, the immigrant rights movement um, is really um, centered around that. And, you know, I think one area where like I want to I want to grow is that um, be more explicit about the role of women and like trans mm -hmm. people in particular. Um, like that's, you know, an area that I'm like, really excited to be able to dig into and not just as a woman but like as as someone who has benefited from like what you were just describing it's mostly those pieces are mostly held by like women and like mm -hmm. uh queer people and so yeah i think i want to do right by them by that work and so i and i also wanted to take this opportunity publicly to thank you for the role that you've played in my own life mm -hmm. thank you Grace. Mm -hmm. um so I have one more question and I want to give you an like, a, a opportunity to ask me anything you want. Cause I feel like I've been oh, asking, I'll, I'll ask a lot of you, but my last question, my last question for you is when was the last time you felt brave? Oh, last time I felt brave. Um, I think it was actually, uh, the, um, the DACA decision day. I, mm. um, you know what what happened is that like we had been in like a three year campaign mode of like keeping daca alive as long as possible i had plans for like you know every possible scenario but really like really only believing that the worst one was the one that was possible mm -hmm. um given like the makeup of the core and like you know the moment that we're in um and so I walked really early in one of these decision days, which was like really anxiety uh, inducing for me. And like a uh, lot of folks, I walked to the Supreme Court an hour before and like I just like sat there um, waiting for my team to come and like in the quiet. I just remember feeling like asking the universe that like whatever happened that I would I would be able to like show up and like be able to be exactly who this movement needed to me to be, no matter what decision was. Um, and uh, I just sat there for a little bit and I walked down the steps um, and it brought me back to like the day where like after the oral arguments, all of us sort of flowed out of the Supreme Court and like we said together like, like here to stay, like our home is here, we're undocumented, queer. Um, yeah, I just felt like, it kind of felt like a moment I was like, bring it, you know, like, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Like, if this is the worst thing that you could do to me, like, been there, done that, we got this, I'm not alone, and um, like, we can do this. And so to have that day be like a good day and like celebration, I don't know, it just, I wasn't expecting it to be honest with you. Yeah it feel good to be prepared for even the worst case of scenario and know that I wasn't alone. Mm. Yeah, that so. is so beautiful. Oh. Um, and thank you. I, I think that you, I just want to just affirm that you played such a critical role in leading that strategy and leading that effort. Um, and just want to lift you up too, because it, if it wasn't for you and for, the, for all, the, all the organizing that led up to that moment, it wouldn't have been possible. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Well, I want to like, I feel like I've been asking you a lot of questions. So I'm going to turn it to you. I don't know if you, are there any questions you want to ask me? You can ask whatever you like, anything hey. on the table. And um, this will be your time to ask me anything. I have a lot of questions, but I think only certain ones are like uh, possible here. <laughs> Life with all these people watching us. Uh, but I will say, um, the first one is, 
what's like the song right now in your playlist that you feel like is giving you like like the oh i got this sort of thing in your and and like the vibe that like is mm. yeah. what is the um hmm so okay so the I, I have a couple of different playlists but there's of course one of my one of my favorite artists is missy elliott and mm -hmm. one of and one of the one of the songs that, that that came up for me was "Lose Control," and I think I think it I think it was like a, a combination of like the build up to the energy, but mm -hmm. also I think it's a it, it, it's for me it's a reminder that um, that I, that the music I can I, I should be free and I should allow the music to take over more and mm -hmm. like affirmation of like me dancing and trying to create more TikTok content. <laughs> Yes. Okay, for real, for real. I'm gonna go follow you now. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the other question I have for you is, based on that, um, you know, like we're like in a very special moment in our movement and like just world history. Yeah. And, and as I was sharing, like the moment will pass and it will go to something else. What's like? What's the one thing that like you want to remind? like future Greg, like in the next couple of years or months about how you like made it through this moment? Like, what do you want to remember? Mm, um, sometimes the the most important thing is to deal with some of the internal work. The, sometimes the internal work is just as important as the external work. Mm. Um, and that the questions that we need to reflect on and interrogate, sometimes the, 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 the bigger ones are the ones that you have to ask yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, um, yeah, and I think that's been an important part of, like, like, in order for me to be able to show up for my community and for my family and for my loved ones, I have to do my own healing and I have to do my own work for myself and, and mm -hmm. to work through the different things um, so that I could be stronger and more clear uh, for the people that I love and that I that I want to um, support and be in community with. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do my best to help you remember that when we go mm. through this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. This is really fun. I know. I loved it too. Thank you so much for taking some time, Grace. Because I know there's a lot going on, but truly appreciate. Um, this time being in community with you and anything lastly that you want to share before we finish up? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, to the folks that are watching, I think we're just here to say that like you should take a dance break um, soon after this. Uh, second is like you should follow United We Dream. Um, we're really trying to like um, be unapologetic, bold, and joyful as we take on these systems that are oppressing us and we need help. Um, so we need you uh, to join us and bring your own magic, uh, get us to the next um, place. Um, and then finally, I think just, um, I think to anyone that's watching this tonight and today or whenever you're watching this, I think a reminder that you are enough um, that um, ev you have everything inside of you um, to make a big imprint in this country and in this moment and in this part of history. And that all you really have to do is what you were saying, Greg, which is like prioritize yourself, learn to love yourself. Um, because that, that shit's infectious. Um, and it's gonna, it's gonna make sure that we're like getting to a better place. So thank you for the opportunity, Greg. It's been really fun. Uh, thank you, Grace, uh, and thank you for all your wisdom. Um, really appreciate it. I um, hope you have a great rest of your um, day, and um, we'll definitely be in touch. Yeah, yeah. My sisters were cooking dinner, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do that now. <laughs> yes. All right. Take care. All right. Bye.